Hola chicos, pues este es el último en esta sesión. Entonces la próxima vez voy a tener otro suéter, ¿vale? <ríe> Pero vale, estamos en la S. La S. Entonces vamos a empezar con sabe a. Ok, now. There's something very interesting about this saber because it can mean to know. But with saber a, it can mean to taste of, okay? And it's kind of this sabor, you know, the, the word sabor is taste. If you want to say something tastes of something, as we do, the preposition we use is of, it tastes of. Well, in Spanish, they say it, it tastes to, all right? Sabe a. So you could say, uh, ¿Qué tal el, el zumo? Uh, el zumo. Sabe a melocotón. It tastes of peach. Sabe a, sabe a, a fresa. It tastes of strawberry. Or, or you can just say, sabe mal. It doesn't taste very nice. Yeah. So this saber can also be for taste. Yeah. Um, a qué sabe? A qué sabe el zumo? A qué sabe? What does it taste of? A qué sabe? Sabe a, a plátano. What does it taste of? ¿A qué sabe? It tastes of banana. Ooh. Qué raro, porque es de verdura. Eh? How strange. It's vegetable. Pero bueno, sabe a plátano. No sé por qué. Okay. So, sabe a. And obviously, if you're talking about multiple things, it's going to be saben a. Okay. Um, Uh, so, what would it be? Estas, estas uvas saben a, a gloria. <laughs> these, these um, what are they called? Grapes. These grapes taste de divine. Okay? They taste of glory, of wonder. <laughs> okay. Um, if you want to speak Spanish, you've got to get used to uh, exaggerating, using exaggerated words about food. If, particularly if you go to Spain, You can't just be willy-nilly, willy-washy, no, what's no, wishy-washy about your food. You, it's either, it's, it, for all food is absolutely delightful, okay? De vino, sabe a gloria, cojonudamente bien, okay, you've got to, okay, no half measures. Now, so sabe a, ahora salir bien, salir bien. Now, this is to turn out well. And obviously, salir mal is to turn out badly. Okay? So, you can say, Sabes, no te preocupes. Siempre todo sale bien. Todo sale bien. Everything turns out okay. Sabes? Todo sale bien. No pasa nada. Mm -hmm. O, Sabes, siempre todo le sale bien. So, everything always turns out well for him. See? Le sale bien. So, you can stick in a pronoun to make it refer to the person. Um, a ver si me sale bien el, uh, la entrevista mañana. Okay? A ver si me sale bien la entrevista mañana. Let's see, let's see whether the interview turns out all right for me tomorrow. Turns out well for me. Okay? Espero que te salga bien la entrevista. Espero que te salga bien la entrevista. Now, that's the subjunctive I'm using there because I'm saying I hope. So, if you're not sure about that, check out the series of subjunctive videos. There are plenty, all right, um, that explains this I hope that. So, espero que te salga bien la entrevista. Mm -hmm. I hope the interview goes, turns out well for you. So, salir bien. Siempre me salen mal las cosas. Things always go badly for me. Siempre me salen mal las cosas. Now, see, because we're saying las cosas, plural, you've got to say me salen mal, not me sale. Just like gustar, you see the pattern? Me gusta, one thing. Me gustan las cosas, I like things. Me gustan. Me salen mal las cosas, salen. Exactly the same thing. Once you understand how Spanish works in terms of how it constructs, everything is relating to something else, it's got to agree, well, it's easy. 
It's easy. Qué fácil. Es pan comido. De verdad. Ok. Bien. Sin embargo. Sin embargo. That means, of course, naturally. It means without embargo. Which is how we used to say things years ago. Without embargo. Ok. But it means however. However. That's all. So you can use it to say... Eh, bueno, eh, estoy en general, estoy contento con lo que haces. Sin embargo, hay unas cositas que deberías eh, arreglar. Okay. So, in general, I'm happy with what you're doing. However, ooh, here comes the truth, there are a couple of things that you need to sort out. Okay. Um, eh, mañana salimos a las, a las nueve, sin embargo... Tenemos que estar listos todos para las ocho. So, tomorrow we're leaving at nine. However, everybody has to be ready for eight. Okay, so that's all. It's just when, whenever we would use however, you're going to use sin embargo. Okay, sin embargo. Okay, this is a nice one. Um, soy un paquete. Soy un paquete. I'm a packet. I'm a packet. Okay. What does soy un paquete mean? Do you think positive or negative? What do you reckon? Positive or negative? You talk about yourself, you say, joder, que paquete soy. It means I'm a mess, I'm, uh, I'm no good, I'm clumsy, uh, things aren't working out well for me, I'm not doing it right, okay? I'm not good at it. Soy un paquete, I'm a packet, okay? Uh, Uh, how you, I can recall listening to somebody and I said to them, eh, ¿Todavía eh, haces ejercicio cada día? But, uh, he used to do lots of exercise. And he said, Joe, estos días no, no, no hago nada. And I said, ¿Por qué no? Y, y, and he said, No sé, soy un paquete. He was very sad. And he called himself a packet. And he, uh, I said, why, why are you not doing exercise? He said, oh, I'm just, I'm a mess. I'm, I'm not in a good place, I'm not very good at it, or whatever. Yeah, something's going wrong. Soy un paquete. Okay? I'm an idiot. All right? So, I don't recommend that you call yourself a packet. All right? If you are, if you feel like a packet, do something. That makes you feel not like a packet. Okay? Um, bien. All right, the next one on the list is invitar a alguien. Okay? Te invito. Now, Cynthia and I have talked long and hard about this. We've done videos about inviting in Spain and the verb invitar. All right, so I recommend that you look at that. It just means if you say te invito, I invite you, you're paying. In Spain, you're paying. All right, so if you invite somebody, te invito a una cerveza, te invito a, so te invito a, that's how they do it. Te invito a un café, te invito a una cerveza. Okay, that means I'm inviting you, I'm going to pay. All right, no two ways about it. So be careful. If you invite somebody, you will pay. Oh, well, or at least they'll be expecting you to pay. If you don't pay, that'll be very bizarre for them. Very bizarre. All right. Um, I know we said this before, but at the moment of paying, then everybody puts their hand to the wallet. But really, the truth of the matter is the person who invited is the one who's going to pay. So everyone will say, no, no, déjame, déjame pagar. No, 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 no. Te invito yo. This is how, it's, how it goes. No. Te invito yo. I'm paying. Te, that means I'm paying. Te invito yo. Okay? Te invito yo. All right. Uh, and then the last one is this one. Tener ganas de. Tener ganas de. And that means to have desire to do something. It means to really want to do something. Like to be excited about doing something, you know? Uh, we can say, oh, I'm really excited to go on holiday. All right. Uh, I know we talked about excitement, ilusión, but also you can say, oh, tengo muchas ganas de irme de vacaciones este verano. I'm really looking forward to, to going on holiday. I'm really excited about going on holiday this summer. Tengo muchas ganas. Um, uh, equally, you can use it to say, I don't really want to. For example, you can say, Sabes, mañana eh, vamos a salir todos, pero yo no tengo, no tengo ganas. 
All right, so tomorrow we're all going out, but I, I just I can't be bothered. I don't want to. No tengo ganas. No tengo nada de ganas. I don't I don't want to go out at all. Okay, if you put nada in, sometimes that makes it at all. Uh, um, oh, tú vas a um, tú vas a pasar el verano en en España, verdad? Tienes ganas? You're going to spend summer in Spain. Are you looking forward to it? Are you? Uh, yeah. Oh, sí. Tengo muchísimas ganas. I'm really looking forward to it. All right. Tener ganas. To be looking forward to something. Pues yo tengo muchas ganas de veros en el siguiente video. Pero hoy no, porque ya estoy cansado y voy a tomarme un té. Entonces, eh, hasta el próximo. Eh, no queda mucho, eh. Estamos casi allí. Dos o tres videos más. Y ya habremos terminado. Entonces, ¡hasta luego, chicos! Hasta la próxima. Thank you.